So a, uh, about a week and a half ago, somebody has sent me a message asking me to uh, explain a little bit about growing tomatoes. And uh, I apologize, it's not that I was too busy to do the video, but um, I actually didn't see the message. So let me kind of start from the beginning. With tomatoes, um, they're not the first thing I grow uh, when I start the, start the seeds. Um, I do the uh, frost hardy vegetables first, the cabbage, the broccoli, the cauliflower, the Brussels sprouts. Uh, I even do sometimes kale. I just didn't do kale this year. And then after that, I do the um, sugar peas, snow peas, and snap peas. And then I'll do the tomatoes uh, right in the middle of my, um, you know, of my seeds uh, of, you know, the 20 plus variety or 20 different type of vegetables I grow. Uh, tomatoes are kind of fall right in the middle of that. Um, I do start them indoors. And for most of us, um, the soil temperature outside isn't warm enough, and plus the nighttime temperatures aren't warm enough, so we'll go ahead and start the seeds indoors. Now, I tend to start my seeds indoors with mo mostly um, either seed starting trays with a real uh, genuine uh, potting mix uh, or seed starting. There's some soils out there called the uh, seed starting potting mix, and I'll buy that um, along with Jiffy Peat pellets. The reason for that is, um, Unlike snow peas and beans and some of these other things that I can grow with uh, without using a soil medium, I can use rock wool, perlite, um, even vermiculite. Um, I've noticed that tomatoes thrive and grow much better in healthier root systems along with the stems if I uh, use actual um, you know, seed starting uh, soil. And so whether you use Jiffy Peat pellets or uh, potting mix or potting mix uh, geared towards specifically seed starting, I would highly recommend doing so. Now, the next thing you want to do is um, as you grow your seeds indoors um, and get them mature enough to bring outside when the weather temperature is good, um, I want to make sure I don't grow, crowd my tomatoes. Now, typically I do plant two seeds per tray or per uh, peat pellets or e even uh, in this um, perlite that I grew it in, uh, I tend to go ahead and uh, I try to put two seeds in each container. And then what I'll do is I'll thin it out immediately. Once it's about an inch tall, I'll just snip it, I'll snip off the smaller one or the one that uh, looks less healthy. Now, the, um, uh, the one of the key things about the tomatoes is um, you want to make sure that we're not uh, overcrowding those tomatoes. So I know at the beginning when we first start out, we have a hard time snipping off any additional growth in a container. But if you're planting two or three seeds per container, um, I would recommend that you go ahead and snip that off. Um, you don't want to crowd your tomatoes first and foremost. Now, your tomatoes, are, are once they start sprouting, um, whether indoors or outdoors, um, you know, you want to make sure that it's in a spot that has a lot of sunshine because uh, tomatoes are big feeders, but they also need a lot of light. And so as soon as my tomatoes started sprouting, I went ahead and put them under the grow light. Uh, I kept the dome on for the humidity purposes and keep it warmer. And then on top of that, uh, I didn't put it in the direct light of my grow lights because my grow lights are fairly strong. And I want to make sure that I'm not burning and and giving it too much exposure early on. So they're kind of on the edges of my grow lights. And as they start growing, I inch them closer and closer to the, to, to directly under the light. Um, and then on top of that, I do have a fan that blows. One thing about tomatoes is they'll get leggy um, if you don't get some a little bit of breeze coming through there. Now, these tomatoes that are sitting out here, I only bring them out during the daytime. Uh, to harden them off, but also to um, kind of sway in the wind and strengthen its root system and strengthen its stem. Now, indoors, um, they're going to get leggy if you don't give it enough enough light. But then on top of that, um, you need to make sure that indoors, since there's no wind, um, that it's a it has a way of swaying and getting the um, the stems, the main stem, um, to. Uh, attach itself more to the root system along with uh, making sure that it uh, has a strong uh, main stem area uh, stem, stem situation. So um, I do turn on a fan and I even have the fan, uh, the circular fan that's uh, moving back and forth. So as it moves back and forth, it just kind of makes the tomato stems um, sway a little bit and strengthen, uh, strengthen the stems. Uh, if you don't do that, then you end up getting a lot of leggy tomatoes that fall over and uh, it just doesn't promote good growth. 
Now, for those of you who are going to plant directly into the ground, um, we want to wait until, you know, day temperatures are definitely above 60. Um, you know, they like it uh, 70 degrees or warmer. Some people say 65. I guess we can get away with putting them out here uh, in the ground at 65. But I usually wait till about s consistently, you know, most of the days during the daytime are right around the 70 degrees or warmer range. Um, also, another thing is the nighttime temp temperatures. Um, tomatoes don't like it when it's cooler than about, you know, 55 to you know 50 to 55 degrees i usually wait for the nighttime temperatures to be about you know above 55 in most most nights throughout the week before i i bring them out here that's why currently right now with nighttime temperatures in zone 8b uh here in the pacific northwest we're getting temperatures uh anywhere from the low 40s to about 48 yeah uh, on any given day and so i bring them in at night um um, I let it get its, uh, you know, get its sun exposure, sway through the wind, and uh, give them an opportunity to uh, get as much natural light because natural light is very important. Uh, you also want to get a long, long number of hours as much sunlight as possible. So, as soon as uh, you know, daytime temperatures are, you know. Uh, fairly good. I'll go ahead and bring them out here uh, as soon as I can and then give it as much light, uh, natural light as I can throughout the day. And then um, as the sun has gone down, I'll bring them indoors at night and uh, that way uh, it's not too cold for them. Now, once you plant them in the ground, hopefully the, the soil temperature has increased uh, enough and uh, daytime temperatures are warm enough uh, above you know, above uh, 65, 70 degrees. And what you're going to do is you're going to plant your tomato seedlings um, and you're going to bury the stems. The one thing great about the stems is, is they form those little tentacles and those little fuzzy things on the, on the very bottom. And if you bury your, uh, bury the stems, uh, they will form and uh, send out uh, root systems throughout the stem area and plus you want it to be hardy and so you'll go ahead and um, unlike other vegetables you'll go ahead and and uh, and you'll go ahead and bury the uh, root systems a few inches further than what the, uh, the stems show currently right now when you grow them from seedlings now after i go ahead and plant them whether you plant them in the ground or you plant them um, like i do in the hydroponic systems uh, you're going to go ahead and uh, monitor your tomato plants uh, make sure there's not a lot of slugs bugs and other things that get at it um, uh, in the past when i did have them in the ground i did cover them uh, with a covering uh, and also barricaded it so that way there's slugs and other things that don't um, don't get get to them now the one thing I would do uh, also too, as you maintain your tomatoes as they're continuing to, to develop before they fruit uh, before they flower, you're going to go ahead and pinch off any of the bottom leaves. Anything that's close to touching the ground or touching the ground, they will pick up diseases very easily from the dirt, from the rain, uh, from bugs and insects that are on the ground level. So make sure you remove the bottom leaves. You're also going to remove any diseased leaves, yellowing leaves. Uh, leaves that have gotten wet and uh, fungus has started growing on them. Um, that's why when you water your tomato plants, instead of hosing it down and spraying it from the top, it's better to water from the ground ground level because uh, anytime you're watering your plants and they uh, tomato plants specifically and you get the leaves wet there's a really good risk of getting fungicides and diseases on your tomato plants and a good way to avoid that is to try to keep your leaves as dry as possible I know of course when it rains it's going to get the leaves wet but when we do most of our watering and we get fewer rainy days uh, as we get into the growing season it's really important to uh, not wet your leaves and I make sure that I pinch off any of the bottom leaves, uh, the leaves that are close to touching the ground. And I actually pinch off all the leaves once, the, uh, once it starts flowering. I actually make sure to pinch off all the leaves that are below the first flower I see. So the first flower, the fruit I see, all the leaves below that are unimportant. So I go ahead and pinch those off. Now, as we all know, uh, pruning and maintaining your tomato plants are critical. Uh, you want the energy to focus on the fruit and on the on the stems that are actually flowering. So as the tomato leaves branch out and they sh uh, form a Y-shaped uh, stem system, uh, there's going to be these suckers that grow in between the Ys. And you want to pinch them off because they have no value to your tomato plant. Uh, they are not flowering stems. 
and they will just take away and sap away your energy from your tomatoes. So make sure that you pinch off those suckers. Uh, very critical to that. Now watering, I've saved um, kind of one of the last things to, um, to talk about because it's really one of the most important. Um, we tend, most people tend to overwater our tomato plants. So you want to keep the soil moist and damp, but you don't want to have them swimming in, in water all the time. And then on top of that, uh, of course, keeping in bone dry or forgetting to uh, water them um, if they're in the ground or specifically in pots, uh, it's really important to not keep them bone dry. Now, someone asked me, um, is it more important to overwater or underwater? Well, it's really <laughs> important for tomatoes to do regular watering right down the middle. But if I had to pick one or the other, I would rather it not be bone dry because when when the soil is bone dry it really puts a lot of stress on the tomato plants and uh, it's also uh, when the fruit is set uh, by having your pot or your ground uh, bone dry it will cause your tomato plant to stress out and a lot of times you'll end up getting split tomatoes uh, where the bottom portions you know start splitting on you quite dramatically and so i would recommend uh, keeping a regular water system check it and uh, one of the problems why people face a lot of, um, uh, you know, dry soil in pots is they're usually um, putting their tomatoes in pots that are way too small. So if you're going to keep your tomatoes in pots uh, throughout the whole growing session, um, you got to have fairly, you know, deep pots. Um, you know, we're talking 10, 12 inches or even more uh, just because tomatoes form really deep really uh, developed and, and long and branching out root systems and they suck water very quickly and by cramming it into a small pot it doesn't allow it to grow its root system very healthy and efficiently and so I go with uh, extra large pot sizes um, you know 10 12 inches at a minimum and um, and this will help make sure that the soil is always damp and moist and it doesn't get bone dry. Also in the hot summer days as we approach the fruiting period, uh, it's really important to check on your tomatoes. So I give it a thorough watering if it's in pots in the morning. And then I check a med day because you'd be surprised uh, in the heart of the growing season how quickly it'll soak up that water and your tomatoes may need uh, watering midday and so in the really hot days i'll go ahead and uh, water two or three times a day just keeping it moist i grow mine hydroponically so i don't have to worry too much about uh, the whole watering system um, i have it in the coolers and so it keeps a regular flow of water going through there but that's a little bit about growing tomatoes if you want more detailed explanation of any of the topics or you have specific questions feel free to send it to me i'm more than glad to answer any and all your questions